Hey guys, this is Hell Hades. This is a Raid Shadow Legends video. Guys, you've asked me for this one, so we're going to do it. Basically, we're going to be testing the new champion, the new epic, who is part of this fusion, who I've kind of bigged up. He then got nerfed, and then I've said he's still good, albeit not as good. We're going to be showing him versus other people that basically do the same job, the solo Dragon 25 job. And what we're going to do is actually make them wear the same gear. Yeah, so let's just see how. Uh, mid, mid. Let's see how Orn does against Bad L, against Eurodrim, against uh, Rishtoff the Bold, yeah, as kind of like solo champions against Tomb Lord. Yeah, there's probably five really in the mix that are really good at this job. Same gear. I'm going to run them with the same type of masteries as well. So this is kind of like the preferred set of masteries. So this dude is in regen set with perception. He's at 227 speed. 389 resistance, 270 accuracy, 3k defense, 64k health, and we're going to be running Dragon 25. On all of them, we're going to be running with the same settings here. Ultra graphics, unlimited frames, so it's going to be a fair test. And I guess, you know, for people that already have got these champions, it's like, well, who is going to be the best? We're going to make sure that no additional benefits coming from some sort of lead here, and... Uh, also, what I'm going to do, I've noticed that High Priest Dawn, without going into his kind of settings, he does not use his A2 against the boss. Uh, so we're going to make sure that he does. Because that's actually going to save us a, probably about 15 or so seconds, I reckon, to make sure he uses it. So we're also now going to use it on waves as well, which again, he wasn't doing before. Or he was doing like hit and miss. So definitely on the boss, he's not doing it. On waves, it seems to be a bit hit and miss. So just bear that in mind if you're going to be using Orn. So let's start with Orn. Let's see what he gets done on Dragon 25 uh, with this build. I've already shown you that it can be done, but can it be done as quick as some of the other ones? I'm not going to make you watch all the waves. Let's get towards the end and see what sort of time he can crack on with. It's definitely worth saying I have not been in any risk of death. Yeah, so this, this build, this champion... In all the times I've done it with this kind of gear set, even when I had him with Warmaster, whereas now he's got the um, the kind of speed up mastery, he's never been in any risk of dying. I have done it quicker than this. I did it quicker than this when I ran him with Warmaster instead of that other mastery. So that's something to watch out for, I guess. If you check out my video from, from uh, a couple of days back. But you can see here, we easily do it and it's going to be close to 3 minutes 10, 3 minutes 20 or so. So that's going to be a kind of like, you know, after a few RNG runs, sometimes you're going to do it quicker because he's, he's got a percentage chance to land his poisons, but it's going to be somewhere close to the 3 minute to 3.20 mark. Okay, then second one up is going to be Eurogrim. Also got everything kind of booked out and stuff. Same gear, almost exactly the same stats. 64k health, a bit more defense here, 3.3k. 225 on the speed, enough accuracy and resistance to do the job. So test two is going to be Eurogrim. In the same setting. We're going to throw him in the lead. And let him use his A2. So with him as the leader. He does have he does have a self kind of buffing aura. So that's pretty fair I think. To say in the same gear. Using his own aura. Can he get the job done. And allowing him to use his A2. Obviously then gives him that fat heal. But it doesn't mean he'll be doing less poisoning. Because of the, uh, of the A1 is going to be used less. He still looks way more frail. And he's definitely, yeah, I would, I would be more nervous. So with Orn, I was never nervous that he was going to die through the waves. This fella is, uh, yeah, way more susceptible to death. Definitely the A2 on though is giving him more survivability. So perhaps the A2 turning off was just a, a poor judgment from me. I didn't think he'd be as risky as this. So anyway, I'll let it go through with this different setup and see with him as the lead if he can kind of compete with Orn. Okay, interestingly, we didn't die. We, didn't, we weren't really close to death when we turned the A2 on. And he's quicker at killing the dragon for sure. We're getting a lot more poisons kicking in from his A1 when we're actually onto the boss. And we're getting round to his, his A3 quicker. So we actually come in at 248 when we throw him in as, in that leader spot. I guess for one last test for him, I'm just going to take him out of the leader spot again. But leave his A2 on. So let him use his A2 but not in the leader spot, because maybe that was the main difference, honestly. And just do one more run with him and see what sort of time he gets here. 
I've got to say, it's much scarier watching Eurodrim do it. There's a few times where he's very low, like tiny health, and he just pulls out a clutch heal with that A2. He's a much scarier champion. I feel like he would fail with this gear set sometimes not often but i think he would fail sometimes on the waves so he does manage it though 250 he is quicker than orn but scarier let's move on to bad l okay then we've got bad l's turn he's got the same masteries he's got the same gear almost exactly the same stats i've cleared out the faction guardian so we've got about 64k health six uh, 3k a little bit more defense actually 227 speed enough accuracy and resistance to do the job the one thing i've noticed here we had Eurodrim was neutral affinity bad l is also neutral affinity so let's see how they fare like orn was actually positive affinity which means that he takes a lot of weak hits it means he's under very little threat but we're going to throw bad l into the same fight see how he gets on see if he can survive the fight he does get round to his abilities pretty damn quick and he does bring a decent amount of continuous heals on himself but i am worried for his life in terms of the amount of damage he might take just because they're all doing you know potentially not strong hits but they're all going to be doing uh potentially just normal hits and, and they all add up so the waves are where i'd kind of worry about bad l similar to how i worried about eurodrim let's let it run so bad l was a bit ropey on the waves um hasn't lost but definitely got down to low health a bit like eurodrim was doing and we just don't have as many poisons which means we're getting more of the sort of scorch ability and you saw again they went very low so although the time is going to be a little bit better than orn i would be worried about this build on a bad l i think you need more health uh, to make sure that it's going to work all the time i think this is not a 100 percent bad l and, and also just not as kind of slick in terms of speed as the eurodrim so for me at the moment i think bad l with those same stats would be my worst pick the one thing you've got to know about legendary so is if you get even a level one brimstone it significantly speeds up your runs yeah landing brimstone on the dragon it's a big hit it's bigger than the poison um smacks that you do so it will speed up your runs a lot so a bit of a call out for Ristoff here he's actually got naturally lower hp and defense than the other champions which makes it harder to get to the same type of base levels using the same gear so we're going to play it fair and he's going to go in the same gear Otherwise, I think it would be uh, not fair. We're going to throw him in. He is the positive affinity. So he's got the same benefit that Orn's got, that it should just be better for his survivability. And he's also got um, an aura that he could use as well, just to kind of pump his own damage a bit, which would help him kind of clear through waves a bit faster. But don't forget, we're all about trying to make sure that we get just as many poisons away as we can. That's where our damage is coming from, not through hits. Will we get back to the regen set? He doesn't have any self-healing like the other three do. So he's got to rely on regen set alone. Might mean that he needs more health and survivability. But he does have way more poison damage potential, actually. So we really need at least one of this wave to drop to give him a bit of breathing space to get back to full health, which he does by far the quickest to get to this stage, like by a long way. Wave 2, though, is way scarier. Wave 2's got a lot more damage threats. You can already see we're taking quite a lot of hits. And it's pretty scary for the health pool. Even though we're the positive affinity here, we're probably dead. We are. Okay, all I've done is I've just enchanted rings and stuff like that. Put slightly better quality ones on. We're going to try a second time because it feels like he's damn close. Uh, albeit... You know, I would be worried for his life. You might want to have someone running as an aura that's got an HP based aura or a defense based aura just to try and pump his stats a little bit more or a speed aura so he gets back to his abilities even quicker. But that was very fast to get onto that wave two. So we're going to try it again. So I want to give him his best chance to do the job. Honestly, this is the first time I've ever leveled my one up on the test server here. Still, we're just. It's scary. It's scary watching this guy run. It just feels like we're lucky we're getting these weak hits in. But obviously, that's that's one of the benefits of him being the positive affinity here. He can take weak hits and just kind of give him a bit of a longer survivability. But you can't always guarantee that, which just means it's not always going to be 100%. But bam, we are getting through the waves pretty damn nice.
This is the wave that I'm scared for. And really, it's the same. Like, one more hit. And we're in trouble. He's just hanging on. They are taking a lot of damage and quickly, but no, he's going to drop. Okay, so our last champion we're going to do then is Tomb Lord. He suffers from the same issue as Wish Off the Bold in terms of just lower base health makes it harder to get to the 64, 65k. Everything else, though, is about the same. He does bring a decreased defense and a drop turn meter, albeit you don't really want the turn meter drop to happen because that slows down your run. It does give you more survivability, but it slows down your run. So I'm going to throw him in. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Here he is. Got to throw him in again without a lead, just as he is, without any AI setup initially. See how that goes, putting this kind of drop defense out there. And then uh, after that, we'll see if it, if it works. If it does great, we will try and turn that off and see if that is still possible to work. Let's let him run. So I've got to call it out. He is under no risk whatsoever of dying. Yeah, he's really in no problem at all. I guess putting the decreased speed out as well with his A1, he's slowing these down. They do take longer to rotate to a turn. And once they start getting below half health, they basically never take a turn with this setup. So he's just hitting them to death. But he's got no risk whatsoever of doing this run. Uh, we'll see the time. And then I'm going to turn that decreased defense and, and turn me to drop off in his AI. And then we'll kind of see how he gets on. I think it'll be a lot quicker but there might be more risk. So he's under no risk, as I said. The other thing here is he benefits a lot from crit rate, which we don't really have in this build. So it's a little bit unfair on him because you would just generally build him differently. You build him with 100% crit, so he always puts out maximum poisons. And we're only on like 20% crit rate. So this definitely wouldn't be like optimal. But what I'm going to do, I guess I'm trying to keep it fair, but I know some people in chat will be like, well, that's not fair on him because he would never be played that way and it's, it's a fair it's a fair argument honestly but what we're going to do we're going to use his blight for the first opener of each ability and then we're just going to stop it from being used completely perhaps not on the boss though uh we'll keep it active on the boss so that way he's not going to waste time just kind of battering people to death when he should be poisoning people to death but as i say like if he's not critting with that poison hit then we're only going to get two poisons on everyone instead of four which dramatically kind of slows him down. Anyway, last run for this video. Let's see how he gets on. So with this change, he comes in at 242. It's actually pretty solid. He's up there kind of in that same fastest group, really. So there you go, guys. That's all of them back to back. Uh, I would say Orn and Tomb Lord are probably the safest picks to be able to do this. Tomb Lord pretty much comes out to me as best, best in class. But uh, I don't know. If you guys are doing it differently with different builds, let me know what sort of times you get and what you're doing differently to what I'm showing here. I've been Hell Hades. I'll catch you later.